Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, even though we are in Wednesday of the second week of Easter, today we will be commemorating one of the great early saints of the church, St. Justin, who, martyr. St. Justin lived from 100 to 165 AD. He is known to be a Christian apologist as well as a great philosopher of his time. His, among his many writings at the time, two apologies, which I'll explain later, and a dialogue do still exist to this day. And in fact, the apolo first apology of Justin is studied by the deacon candidates in our deacon preparation program here in the Western Diocese of the Polish National Catholic Church. Now, he wrote these to try to convince the em Roman Emperor Antonius to abandon his persecution of the church. And he was wise in, in Greek philosophy as well, having studied Stoicism before he found Christianity. And he was martyred alongside some of his students to whom he was teaching Christianity in the Greek philosophical tradition. And it was because of a Syrian Christian, a very old, wise Syrian Christian that Justin met in his early days that convinced him of the truths of Christianity. And he ev eventually converted to becoming a Christian and spreading that as well as he could throughout the whole world, filled with zeal and giving his life for Christ and spreading the good news. And so St. Justin Martyr, pray for us. So let us begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord, bless us with the wisdom to praise you in spirit and in truth, so that by following your holy will we may gain eternal salvation. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters, let us take a moment, confess our sins to God in ways that we have failed him and our neighbor in thought, word, and deed, so that we may worthily participate in this holy sacrifice. Please now make an examination of your conscience. Let's say together the second form of the Confidior. I confess to Almighty God, in the presence of the Blessed Virgin Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, that I have sinned through my own fault, in my thoughts, in my words, and what I have done or failed to do. I ask the Blessed Virgin Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. For your penance, I would ask you to say two Hail Marys. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. And may our Lord Jesus Christ absolve you, and with his authority vested in me, I absolve you from all of your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Yet these also were godly men whose virtues have not been forgotten. Their glory will never be blotted out, but their name lives on and on. Rejoice, you just in the Lord. Praise from the upright is fitting. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit 
in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, as we acknowledge the perseverance of your glorious martyr Justin in his confession of faith, so may we enjoy his loving intercession with you. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing. But to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and the learning of the learned I will set aside. Where is the wise one? Where is the scribe? Where is the debater of this age? Has not God made the wisdom of the world foolish? For since in the wisdom of God, the world did not come to know God through wisdom, it was the will of God through the foolishness of the proclamation to save those who have faith. For Jews demand signs and Greeks look for wisdom. But we proclaim Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and foolishness to Gentiles. But to those who are called, Jews and Greeks alike, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. For the foolishness of God is wiser than human wisdom, and the weakness of God is stronger than human strength. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our response is, The Lord delivered me from all my fears. The Lord delivered me from all my fears. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall ever be in my mouth. Let my soul glory in the Lord. The lowly will hear and be glad. The Lord delivered me from all my fears. Glorify the Lord with me. Let us together extol his name. I sought the Lord, and he answered me, and delivered me from all my fears. The Lord delivered me from all my fears. Look to him that you may be radiant with joy, and your faces may not blush with shame. When the poor one called out, the Lord heard, and from all his distress he saved him. The Lord delivered me from all my fears. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him and delivers them. Taste and see how good the Lord is. Blessed the man who takes refuge in him. The Lord delivered me from all my fears. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your heavenly Father. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. May Almighty God cleanse my heart and my lips that I may worthily proclaim your holy gospel. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, You are the salt of the earth. But if salt loses its taste, with what can it be seasoned? It is no longer good for anything but to be thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A city set on a mountain cannot be hidden. Nor do they light a lamp and then put it under a bushel basket. It is set on a lampstand, where it gives light to all in the house. Just so, your light must shine before others, that they may see your good deeds and glorify your 
heavenly Father. Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have come not to abolish, but fulfill. Amen. I say to you, until heaven and earth pass away, not the smallest letter or the smallest part of a letter will pass from the law until all things have taken place. Therefore, whoever breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do so will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever obeys and teaches these commandments will be called greatest in the kingdom of heaven. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, our readings today are taken from the memorial of St. Justin Martyr. Now, our calendar goes by the old Roman pre-conciliar calendar, pre-1969, so the readings you may notice are from June 1st in the new Roman calendar, but historically Justin Martyr's day has been April 14th, so that's why we celebrate him today. And our first reading from the, Paul's first letter to the people of Corinth, we hear about the difference between the wise and the learned and the foolish. And Paul here is switching things around a little bit. Because those who are wise in the w eyes of the world are usually foolish in the eyes of God. Because those who are considered wise in the world are attached to worldly things, created things. But those who are wise in the eyes of God are wise in the things above the earth, of heaven. Sometimes those things don't quite intersect. Because the reason for that is we live in a fallen world. And that is unfortunate but at the same time, it's a great opportunity for us to strive toward holiness. In our gospel from St. Matthew, we hear about salt losing its taste and being no good. We hear about lights, lamps being lit. You don't cover a lamp. You let the light shine through, especially at night, so that people can see. And everything is revealed. Now we, as Christians, as inheritors of the teachings of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, passed down through his church through two millennia, we, my brothers and sisters, are the light of the world. St. Justin was an early example of that. He used his philosophical gifts along with his faith to try to explain Christianity to those who just couldn't get it yet, including no one less than the emperor of Rome, the greatest kingdom in the world at that time, who was persecuting Christians because they were going against the pagan religion that was officially Rome's. Justin, in writing his apology, uh, such a beautiful beautiful writings, both the first and second apologies. And if you can, I would encourage you, it's free online, to look it up and read it. It's some of the most beautiful writings you'll ever read. It's coming from way back in the second century AD, or CE. And he is using his philosophical gifts to explain Christianity to the people of his time. But brothers and sisters, we live now in a post-Christian world, a world where people have forgotten about the teachings of Christ or dismiss it as nothing more than fables and stories. We know Christ gave us as the truth because he is the Son of God, and that truth has been passed down through the millennia and is handed to us today. So we, being the light of the world, we need to do a few things. Number one is brighten our light. And we do that 
by learning more and more about the faith and the truths that come from God. The commandments is where we start, the Ten Commandments. But, we, but from there we move to Christ, who condensed those ten into two. Love God above all things and love your neighbor as yourself, which means we also have to have a l proper love for ourselves, not narcissistic love, but proper humor humility love for ourselves so that we can then love others in a proper way wanting the best for them without cost for us doing that my brothers and sisters and increasing our knowledge faith and love of christ and his church will allow us to become that bright light and we don't want to put that under a bushel basket we want to take those things that have been given us and share it with the whole world so that the light of Christ can shine into the darkness of people's hearts today. <coughs> Excuse me. That is the lesson we get from St. Justin Martyr, whom we remember today. That is what we are called to do as baptized Christians in this world, is counteract the culture of death, the culture that shuts out Christ from every aspect of our society and bring that light back. Shine that light so that all the bad things are come to be seen so that they can be avoided and rejected by those of goodwill. If we do that, then we will be called greatest in the kingdom of heaven because that is our command from Jesus. If we fail to do that, we will then be sent to the netherworld because of our choices not to defend our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Brothers and sisters, the choice is ours. It's for me and my household. We shall serve the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you with faith in the Lord's resurrection and confident in his loving mercy, let us turn now to him and offer our prayers of petition. Our response is, Alleluia. That on this day, the church will rededicate herself to living and proclaiming Christ's mercy. We pray to the Lord, Alleluia. For all world leaders, that the sacrificial love of Jesus may inspire them to protect the dignity and sanctity of human life by countering law, legal abortion and euthanasia. We pray to the Lord. Alleluia. For our faith community, that we may embrace the corporal and spiritual works of mercy and extend God's compassion to those in need, we pray to the Lord. Alleluia that the hope of our risen Lord may give consolation and strength to the sick and suffering, especially those on our parish prayer list, and bring an end to this pandemic, we pray to the Lord, Alleluia. For the intention of this Holy Mass, which are for you, the intentions that you bring forward today, we pray to the Lord, Alleluia. For all those who have died and those who will die today, that the light of Christ's eternal peace may shine upon them, we pray to the Lord, Alleluia. For all of the intentions we hold deep in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord, Alleluia. Risen Lord, your mercy extends to all the earth and calls us to gather together in faith. May you walk into our midst this day with your bright light and guide us to new life. In moments of doubt and despair, may we never forget that you are always near, who live and reign with the Father in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Let the faithful rejoice in their glory, cry out for joy at their banquet, let the high praises of God be on their lips.
Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. May it become for us the bread of life. By the mystery of this wine and water, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to offer. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, may it become our spiritual drink. Lord God, we ask you to receive us and be pleased with the sacrifice we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. Come, Holy Spirit, and bless this sacrifice which we have prepared for the glory of your holy name. Lord, wash away my iniquity. Cleanse me from my sin. Receive this offering, most holy trinity, which we make in memory of the passion, resurrection, and ascension of our Lord Jesus Christ and in honor of the Blessed Virgin Mary and all the saints. May they whose memory we honor on earth intercede for us in heaven. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept this sacrifice from my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and for the benefit of his holy church. Heavenly Father, let your bounteous blessing come down upon us. May the prayers of your holy martyr Justin make our gifts pleasing to you and a sacrament of redemption for us. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Father, all-powerful and ever-living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Your servant, St. Justin Martyr, was baptized into the body of Christ and, following our Savior, offered up his own life as a testament of faith in the promised resurrection. By maintaining his faith in the face of violence and death, St. Justin gives the church courage to be a faithful witness, standing against the evils of this world. Therefore, with the angels and archangels, with all the saints and the entire church, we lift our hymn of praise to your glory, repeating unceasingly, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy Sacrifice of the Mass continues with Eucharistic Prayer 3, which is found on page 84 if you're following along. We acclaim you, Holy Lord, glorious in power. Your mighty works reveal your wisdom and love. You have formed us in your own image, giving the whole world into our care, so that, in obedience to you, our Creator, we might rule and serve all your creatures. When our disobedience took us far from you, you did not abandon us to the power of death. In your mercy, you came to our help so that in seeking you, we might find you. Again and again, you called us into covenant with you, and through the prophets, you taught us to hope for salvation. Gracious God, you loved the world so much that in the fullness of time, you sent your only Son to be our Savior. Incarnate by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, he lived as one of us, yet without sin. To the poor, he proclaimed the good news of salvation, to prisoners, freedom, to the sorrowful, joy. To fulfill your purpose, he gave himself up to death, and rising from the grave, destroyed death, and made the whole creation new and that we might live no longer for ourselves, but for him who died and rose for us. He sent the Holy Spirit, his own first gift for those who believed, to complete his work in the world and to bring to fulfillment the sanctification of all. When the hour had come for him to be glorified, having loved his own who were in the world, 
He loved them to the end. At supper with them, he took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and eat it. For this is my body, which is given for you. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which shall be shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me. We now celebrate the memorial of our redemption, recalling Christ's death and descent among the dead, proclaiming his resurrection and ascension to your right hand, awaiting his coming in glory, and offering to you from the gifts you have given us this bread and this cup, we praise you and bless you. Together, we praise you, we bless you, we give thanks to you, and we pray to you, Lord our God. We pray that in your goodness and mercy, your Holy Spirit may descend upon us and upon these gifts, sanctifying them and showing them to be holy gifts for your holy people. The bread of life and the cup of salvation, the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Grant that all who share this bread and this cup may become one body and one spirit, a living sacrifice in Christ to the praise of your name. Remember your one holy, catholic, and apostolic church redeemed by the blood of your Christ. Reveal its unity, guard its faith, and preserve it in peace. Remember Anthony, our prime bishop, Jerry, our bishop, and all who minister in your church. Remember all your people and those who seek your truth, especially those praying with us today and who are on our parish prayer list. Remember all who have died in the peace of Christ, whose faith is known to you alone, especially all of those who will die today and those of our families and friends who have passed. Bring them into the place of eternal joy and light and grant that we may find our inheritance with the Blessed Virgin Mary, with our ancestors in faith, with the prophets, apostles, and martyrs, with St. Justin Martyr, whose memory we keep today, and with all the saints who have found favor with you in ages past. We praise you in union with them and give you glory through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, all honor and glory are yours, creator of all, in the unity of the Holy Spirit forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray, instructed by our Savior's teaching and following divine example, we say with confidence, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil and grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin and protect us from all anxiety as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. The cup of blessing which we bless, is it not a participation in the blood of Christ? The bread which we break, is it not a participation in the body of Christ? Because there is one bread, we who are many are one body, for we all partake of the one bread. May the union of divinity and humanity in Jesus Christ bring us sanctification and eternal life. Amen. Lord, 
Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace. My peace I give you. Do not look at our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, where you live forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Let's say together the second communion prayer on page 98 if you're following along. May the partaking of your body and blood, Lord Jesus, not be caused for my judgment or condemnation. Though I am unworthy to receive this great sacrament, through your loving kindness may it become my safeguard and healing remedy. My saving master, awaken in me a living faith, fervent love, worship, adoration, and a holy longing. Through this communion, make me your willing servant, zealous to fulfill your holy will. May it at last unite me entirely with you, my Lord and my God. I will take the bread of heaven and call upon the name of the Lord. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. May the body of Christ bring me to everlasting life. May the blood of Christ bring me to everlasting life. Please join me now in the act of spiritual communion. Most loving Jesus, I adore you in the most blessed sacrament in which you are truly present. I love you above all things and I long for you in my soul. <clears throat> Since I cannot receive you sacramentally, I ask you to come spiritually into my heart and heal my soul. I embrace you and unite myself with you. May I never be separated from you. Inflame my heart with the fire of your love, my Lord and Savior. Amen. Lord, may I possess with a pure heart that which I have taken as food. May the gift I have received bring me healing and strength now and forever. Then they will celebrate with great joy. They are glad and rejoice. Let us pray. Lord our God, we have been refreshed and restored through these holy mysteries. May we be helped and protected by the prayers of your holy martyr Justin, whose triumphs we celebrate. We ask this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia. Please join me now in the prayer of St. Michael. Holy Michael, the archangel, defend us in battle. Be our safeguard against the wickedness and snares of the devil. 
May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And to you, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who wander through the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Now please join me in a prayer for peace in our country, state, locality, and world with the prayer of St. Francis. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. O oh, Divine Master, grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, thank you so much for joining us today for our celebration of St. Justin Martyr. Yes, we pray that you can join us again tomorrow at noon Central Daylight Time and also on Sunday for the third Sunday of Easter at 9 a.m. Central Daylight Time. Pray that you have a great day. Stay safe, stay healthy, take care of each other, take care of yourselves, and always remain in a state of grace and be the light that's not under a bushel basket but gives light to the whole world around you. For all the saints who from their labors rest, all who by faith before the world confessed, thy name, O Jesus, be forever blessed. Alleluia.